Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own ring in the spring headband. We're going to be making an adult sized headband. Um, but before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course hit the notification bell so that you get uh, made aware of each time a new pattern or crochet tutorial gets put onto my channel. Let's gather the materials that we need to make this wonderful headband. So I'm going to be using um, Sirdar Snuggly Cashmere Merino. I'm actually going to make it in the leaf shade. Um, but I want to tell you all about this yarn because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, as you can see, it's a blend of wool, acrylic and cashmere. So it is super squishy and really soft. Um, the recommended hook size for this yarn is a four millimetre which is the hook size that we're going to be using. This is my trusty one, the paint has worn off. You're also going to need a um, two inch macrame ring. Now you can find thinner ones, um, but as you can see, this is covered pretty much the whole way round so that um, it doesn't actually sit on your skin and it makes it really comfortable. You are of course gonna need a pair of scissors and a darning needle as well. So gather all your materials and let's get started. So what we're going to be doing is by starting with row one and joining our yarn to our macrame ring. Now remembering that this is a two inch macrame ring for an adult sized headband, we're going to need to make from this to this about 10 inches long. That's for the adult size. And um, what we're going to do is to repeat what I've done here already on this side and sew those two sides together. So regardless of which side you're doing, they're both identical, but to make sure that they're both the stitches are facing the right way in a mirrored fashion, you need to make sure that your tail yarn from your first row, your first side, is on the opposite side of your crocheting. So your tail on this side of the headband will be on the opposite side. That way, all your right sides of your project will be on the same side. So make a slip stitch onto your hook and we're going to work around this ring. So to do that with your working yarn out of the way is insert your hook into the macrame ring, yarn over and bring it back round and then simply pull straight through to slip stitch. So that's our slip stitching to join. I'm going to move that around so we're a little bit closer to there and then for row one we're simply going to place 16 single crochets around the ring. So we're going to start with a chain one. And then we're going to working into the ring and around. Just go through, pull the yarn back through. We're going to yarn over, oops, yarn over and pull through both those loops as we would for a normal double crochet in the UK terms, single crochet. In US terms. So that's two. Oops. Three. Four. Five. Six. Eleven, twelve. Sorry, it just me. Thirteen, <laughs> unlucky, eh? Hey? Fourteen. Having that extra width is making it move the hook a lot more to get it around. I think and that was fourteen. Fifteen. 
And finally, number 16. So obviously you can adjust where your stitches are positioned, but you should have a total of 16 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and that's the slip stitch we use to join. So at the end of row one on your second half, it's the same for either side. It's just important to note that you've got your tail yarns on either side of your macrame ring, just to make sure that everything looks exactly the same. So going into row two, this is the same for both sides. You start by chaining one and then turning we're going to place a double crochet or a single crochet into each stitch across. So where we've chained one, you see that hole there, that's where we're going to place our first double crochet. We insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through both loops on your stitch, on your hook, sorry. And so place a double crochet or a single crochet, if you're following the US terms, in each of these stitches across. You can see quite where you should be going, it's almost where that gap is in between. This is the trickiest, the second trickiest row. I think row one is definitely tricky, but row two isn't, two isn't much easier. But once you've done this bit, it's all easy from there, I promise. So we are simply placing a double crochet into each stitch across. If you are following along with a written pattern that's on my website, you can find that. I'll link it in the description box below for you as well. It's always, I always recommend if you can find the written pattern to follow along so that you get used to reading written patterns too. It's just another way of doing it. The quickest way to learn is to practice, as they say. Maybe they don't, but I do. <laughs> more for this row. Oh, I split that yarn. Hang on one second. There we go. So this is the final one because that one next to it is the slip stitch. We're not going to work into that because we only need 16 stitches at the end. What am I catching on now? 16 stitches at the end of row one. I'd recommend that you double check your stitch count, otherwise the next row won't work. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Perfect. So going into row three, we are going to chain four. Two, three and four. I always chain before I turn, I just feel it looks a little bit neater for my crocheting style. So what we're going to do is then in this first stitch underneath the chain four, so into this stitch here, we're going to place three treble crochets. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook into that first chain, yarn over, bring a loop up, we should have three loops on our hook, Yarn over, pull through those first two loops. Again, we're left with two loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through two. So that's one. We're going to do that twice more again into that same stitch. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook into that same stitch again. Yarn over to bring a loop up. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And for a final time, Yarn over, work into that same stitch again. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. So what we have here in this stitch, just move that out of the way for a moment. We have a chain four, which counts as one treble crochet or one double crochet in the US. And we, it's created a chain space. 
So one treble crochet and one chain. We've then got three treble crochets, which is our granny stitch. And then to finish this part, before moving on, we're going to chain one. We're then going to skip the next two stitches. So we're not working in this one or that one. We're going to work into that third one there. And we're going to place three treble crochets again. So skip, skip, and into number three. One, two, and in here. Make sure you grab both loops of that stitch that you're working into. We're going to yarn over, pull through, and place three treble crochets in all into that same stitch once again. So we've got one, two, and three. Chain one, and then we're going to skip the next two stitches, yarn over, and work into the third. So one, two, three. Yarn over, bring that loop up, pull through two, pull through two, place two further treble crochets into that same stitch. So we've got one, two, three, chain one, and we're going to repeat that again. So skip, skip, work. Remember to yarn over. One, two, three. There we go. We're working to that third stitch along. And again, we're just going to place three treble crochets into that same stitch. And chain one. Oops. We're going to skip the next two stitches. So skip, skip and work making sure that you've yarned over before inserting your hook. Again, place three treble crochets. One, two, three, chain one. We've got three stitches left. But in this final stitch here, we're not going to place three treble crochets. We're just going to place one. So we yarn over, skip those next two stitches and place one further treble crochet into that last stitch to finish our row. So the end of row three, you should have a chain four and a space, three treble crochets, so a granny stitch, a space, granny stitch, stitch, a space, Granny stitch, space, granny stitch, space, granny stitch, space, and a treble crochet at the end. So one, two, three, four, five granny blocks, and one, two, three, four, five, six chain spaces. So going into row four, we are going to chain four again. So one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> again, this counts as one treble crochet and the chain one. And we are going to skip this chain space here and work into this space, placing a granny stitch. So work three treble crochets into the second chain space. And chain one. And I'm going to work into that next chain space there, placing a further three treble crochets. I have four. I have done this wrong. So we're going back to the end of row three.
So going into row four, we should have those nice chain spaces to work into. So we're going to start row four by chaining four. So one, two, three, and four. I'm going to turn my work. And this once again chain counts as a treble crochet and a chain one. So in this first chain space underneath the chain four, we're going to face place our first granny stitch. So we do three treble crochets into that first chain space. And chain one. And then we're going to place three treble crochets into each of the chain spaces along. with a chain one after the third treble crochet. Again, three treble crochets into the next chain space. Chain one. A further three treble crochets into that next chain space. Chain one. Another three treble crochets. And then in the space between your three treble crochets and your chain four that you did, after your chain one, you are just going to place, go into the chain space between your granny block and your, your four chain that you did at the start of the previous row, insert your hook into there and place one last treble crochet all on its own at the end. So you can see at the end of row four, we have the pattern. Very, very simply. So row five, all the way up to row 21 is exactly the same as row four. So we start by chaining four, turn our work, Working the opposite way, we place three further treble crochets into that first chain space. Chain one. And then into each of all of the other chain spaces, we place three treble crochets. And then right at the end, we place that singular treble crochet. So I'll keep going along with row five with you here. So we're placing a further three treble crochets into that next chain space. Chaining one in between each of these blocks. Chain one. Another three treble crochets. Another three treble crochets. That's two, no, no, not quite enough there. Chain one, and then in that final chain space between the last granny block and that chain four, we place one treble crochet. So you're going to repeat that row four. Um, up to a total of 21 rows. So very easy way to count your rows. So if we go up this side, it'll be easier. Well, either side doesn't really matter. So we've got space. So that's one, no space, two, space, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. So once you've done a total of twenty-one rows of this granny stitch, so repeating that row four, um, I will meet you back here so that we can do row number twenty-two together, and then I'll show you how to join the two sides together to form your headband. So I'm just placing my last treble crochet of row 21 
into that last chain space. So now I have both sides that are matching. I'm just going to move my yarn to the other side before I get all tangled. Because what we're going to do now is firstly we're going to do row 22. So we're going to oops, chain one and turn. So just chain one and this time we're just going to place a single crochet or a double crochet in UK terms into each stitch and chain space across. So we place one where we just did our chain one and then we place one double crochet into that chain space Okay, and then the next one is in the top of the first treble crochet of the granny block. One, two, I always count these because I want to make sure that I'm placing it in all three of the treble crochets. There we go. And then again into the chain space. And then again in the top three. So we're going to end with a total of 22 double crochets. So we've already done one, two, three, four, five, and six. So number seven goes into the top of the next one. So seven. Eight. We should have a total of 22 double crochets along this side here. Now if this is your first side of the headband that you've completed you need to go and complete the second side. Just remembering that your tails from where you slip stitch the, the yarn on need to be on opposite sides of the ring so you can just flip that to turn it. So the last thing to do is we are going to join these two pieces up together and that will give us our completed headband. So at the end of row 22, we're going to chain one. If you have, um, if this is your first side of the headband, you can cut your yarn here and then go and rejoin it to do the other side of the headband. If this is your second side and you're looking a little bit something like that, keeping your working yarn away for the moment, bring the two edge pieces together. I'm going to pull that out so we can talk about what we're going to do because we're going to slip stitch but we're going to do it so that we capture and leave a row of, of like an, a, seam, a seam at the back of the headband that's very neat and tidy. So to do that what we're going to do we've done our chain one there we go I'm just going to put that back on there so we're going to work into or pick up the front loop of the stitch closest on the side closest that's attached to our hook essentially and on the other side of the headband we locate that first stitch so there's the chain there's my first stitch and I'm going to pick up that back loop on this side so I've got half of the stitch on this side and half of the stitch on that side and I'm going to yarn over and slip stitch by pulling through each of those loops and the loop on my hook to secure those closed. So again on the piece closest to your hook we're going to just pick up that front loop, the loop closest to us of the stitch, 
So you've got two loops with your stitch and we just want this one. So instead of going underneath and picking up both loops as we normally would, we are going to go under and just pick up the first loop of that stitch. And then we can see that we've worked into that stitch. So we want the back loop of this stitch here. I'm going to pick that and pop that onto the hook. We're going to yarn over and slip stitch through those stitches and through the loop on our hook. We're going to do that all the way up. So the front loop on this side. So front loop first. Making sure you just pick up the front loop because you'll see why it's absolutely looks like a lovely running stitch all the way through. So front loop and then back loop and then slip stitch them together. Oops, without missing half of your yarn. Try that again. Back loop and then there we go. So we do the front loop first, just that front loop, just that back loop and slip stitch them together. We're going to do that for each of the 22 loops. Oops, sorry, front loop first. So all of these 22 stitches we're going to slip stitch to join. Just so you can have a little sneak peek of how lovely that's going to look. You can see that it leaves the unworked loop of the stitch showing. So it's going to give us a lovely little finish at the end. So I'm going to keep working up and I'll meet you at the end. So I'm just placing my last slip stitch, which is always the trickiest one. The light I'm working in is absolutely terrible, so just bear with me. Let's go in that way. There we go. And the back stitch on this one. Slip stitch to join. I'm going to pull that loop up. Oops. Without hitting the camera. Just have a quick look at that lovely join that we've created. It's a nice, even join. So, move that out of the way, pop the loop back onto my hook, let's tighten that, and we are simply just going to fasten off. So I'm just going to do a chain one to create a knot, and then I'm going to snip my yarn, leaving, leaving a tail that I can weave in. So now we just need to weave the tails in, but we can see the full effect of this glorious headband. And it really is very pretty. You just heard my dog snore, sorry about that. There we go. So on the inside you do have a seam, but on the rear you have that beautiful join. So the next thing we're going to do, grab a darning needle. I'm just going to weave these ends in. Now you can either just feed them underneath the ring here towards the closest stitches, which is probably the neatest place to hide them, but it might be a bit tight to get your needle through. And just go in a little bit and then go back under, pick up the next few. I'm not weaving in and out because I love how this how detailed the stitches look. I'm just going to then push through. It doesn't have to be all the way to the end. You can see that that's completely hidden. And even when you move that, it's not going to show. So I'm just going to snip that. And that is that one hidden. Oops. And I'm going to do the same with this end. Just going to place it underneath. That's not gone through, has it? Let's try that again. It might be easier to do it from this way. Ooh. 
This is why I slip stitch joined my headband because I'm not the greatest at sewing. Just kind of push it through some of the stitch and between the stitches. And then once you're happy that it's in far enough that it won't come out, you can just snip that end there. There we go. And that's all hidden. And then I've turned it back so it's inside out again, so I can just deal with these two ends here. Now, I really don't like the idea of things coming undone, and I know in theory we shouldn't have any knots in crochet, but I'm just going to secure that very lightly just by putting a very small knot there. I'm not pulling it tight, I just don't want it to ever possibly come undone. So to weave the ends in for this, it's going to make that slightly smaller, just cut a little bit off that end there, just so that they are not quite as long, not as much to deal with. And I'm simply going to weave my ends in along the seam that we made with the slip stitch. So I do, I'm a very strong believer in the power of three. So you should go once that way, once the other way, and then once again the other way. The chances of you seeing your ends again on your work after doing that are slim to none. I mean, there is always a possibility, but it would be highly, highly unlikely. And as you can see, I sew with my other hand that I crochet with, just to confuse you. But, so once I've gone in one way, I'm going to move my hook up a stitch and go back the other way. Just weaving it in gently, trying not to pick up any stitches because you don't want it to show through on the other side, which that will. So come a little bit closer to that seam. Just go in and out of the seam there. You can see that no one can see where we're weaving in, which is always a good thing. And again, for a third time, just going to come back one stitch and go up and in and out in the seam, if I remember where that is. There we go. And do the same with the other strand as well to complete your project. So once you've weaved in all your ends, you are going to have your own, very own, beautiful... I need to turn it the right way out, of course. I will weave that other end in later. And then you've got your own beautiful headband to wear. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've enjoyed making your own headband. Do feel free to tag me in a photo on your social media so I can see you sporting your very own headband um, and join me again by hitting that subscribe button to make sure that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. Ensure that you tick, well, tap that bell so that you get notifications of when my latest crochet pattern releases and free crochet tutorials come available. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon.